All right, so today I'm uh, over at my buddy Matt's house, and uh, I did drive the Jeep over here, and I do want to show you the Jeep real quick because, it, like Matt just pointed out, it looks really cool sitting up on his grass. But at least that way I didn't drip anything on your driveway, right? But it doesn't really have leaks, just a couple of... It's got a couple drips, though, that i got to chase down. But uh, anyways, long overdue is an update on uh, Matt's $1,000 square body. And he's still got some things to do to it, but it has come a long way. And if you haven't caught any of these videos, I'll put a, uh, uh, I'll put a playlist of his truck build from the day he drove it home uh, for $1,000 to, to where it is today. And it's really impressive. So let's go take a look at it. All right, so this is my 83. I always get my years mixed up because now I've got an 84 square yeah, body. <laughs> and he's, yours is an 82, right? Yeah. All right, so this is an 83 CJ7. Um, I've had it about almost four years now and uh, completely went through this. There's 70 plus videos on this build uh, on my YouTube channel if you want to check those out. But this is not the star of the show today. The star of the show is this square body right here. And I'm gonna walk this way so I don't get in the sun. And check that thing out. I know my shadow's on the hood there, but the sun is still up right now. But uh, really, really cool looking 82 Scottsdale. Uh, yes. Scottsdale. Um, <laughs> and he bought this truck for $1,000 and it did not look anything like this. He's painted it, obviously done a ton of work on it. Uh, new wheels and tires, which look awesome. And uh, we're gonna do a quick walk around. And I'm gonna really let Matt do the talking here because he's the one that built this thing. And then he's still got stuff to do on it, uh, no question. I was calling out a couple, a couple of things earlier. And I'll show those to you as we walk around, but uh, let's do a quick walk around. And uh, like I said, I'll let Matt tell you what he did to it. So updates from last video, like John said, it's come a long way. Um, it does no longer have only a thousand dollars in it, so we don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the thousand dollar square body anymore. But uh, anyway, the the biggest hurdle, you know, John and I talk about those showstoppers is just stop you in your tracks and you can't get over them. Um, I had the fourteen bolt rear end. I could not source the backing plates to convert the ten bolt over to the six lug 10 bolt over to eight lug outers. Um, so I ended up uh, basically modifying the factory backing plates uh, to fit the eight lug rotors on there. And once I got over that, that was my hurdle that's got me going again. I got my momentum back. So since last video, uh, obviously the paint's done. It's yep. uh, the Desert Storm sand camo. It's uh, oil-based enamel. Uh, 50 bucks a quart off eBay uh, Super easy to spray easy to touch up uh, really gives me the look I was going for uh, I do have find I found a, a CUCV front bumper for it uh, That I will be putting on uh, John told me I have to do that <laughs> Now the CUCV the whole when we got the original picture that inspired this truck and Matt showed me the original picture It's got that CUCV uh, front bumper and brush guard. And I'm like, dude, you got to get one. And they're hard to find. They are hard to find. Yeah, they're really hard to find. Yeah, I found one. But you painted this whole grill. Um, the front bumper was, it's new, right? But it's yes. got that, it's like that EDP, that EDP coating primer and it did not hold up in yeah, the it sun. Was, it was semi-gloss and I thought, oh, yeah. that's, that's perfect. Yeah. You know, she's dirty. She's been sitting outside and all that. But no, it really did fade. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, biggest accomplishment was getting these eight lug rotors on there. So what I did is I bought brand new eight lug rotors. Um, the hubs were integrated hub and rotor. The four wheel drive locking hubs are the same for half ton and three quarter ton. The bearings are all the same. The calipers, believe it or not, can be the same uh, depending on what model they had. Some of them interchange. I did put new calipers on it. And what I ended up doing was cutting the mounts off of the original backing plates, spacing them about a half inch is what I had to move them. Not so much diameter because the rotor is only a half inch diameter, I believe bigger, uh, but it was spaced differently. And I had to slide those out and basically re-weld the backing plates, mount the calipers, and that was a time consuming process. It was put it all together, mock it up, tack it, 
take it all back apart. Put it all back together, do a few more welds, tack it, put it all back apart. And you're you're trusting your uh, welding skills. I'm trusting my welding <laughs> skills. So I'm, hey, ha I'm, I'm happy with the uh, the way it turned hey, out. Hey, I, so. I trust mine. I, I welded the motor mounts in my Jeep, and the motor hasn't broken free yet. So black mirrors, black door handles, black brush guards, or drip rails. Not brush guards, but the drip rail. All that looks really good. I know you got some cleanup to do on those vent windows and on that got a little overspray up there but i'm not you know not yeah. being too critical because man it's this truck looks progress, great yeah so this is not the original bed and the last time in the last update the bed was not secure so that's done and the bed's painted and this bed's in great shape great shape and the, the floor of the bed is in great shape as well looks really good and matt's gonna get that line x is that correct you're saying I have to do it, yeah. I don't want to spend the money, but uh, yeah, you're, you're telling me uh, yeah. it's something I've got to spend on, so. And that just, it's got a great stance. It's got a great look. I love the way the tires stick out just a little bit. And uh, the pipe bumper is finally mounted. And that looks great. So for the wheel and tire package, uh, I ended up going with a 15 by 10 uh, made by US Wheel. It's a two and three quarter inch backspace and I had to get that much backspacing to clear the big drums on the three quarter ton eight lug rear axle. Uh, and I wanted to go with 15 inch wheels, uh, 16 and a half, which obviously it would have come with. Uh, nobody makes tires for them anymore, right? And I don't like the look of personally 17s, 18s, biggers on these old square bodies. I don't either. So, I, like the, I like the 15s, gives you a big sidewall, a lot of meat. Yep. Big meaty looking tire, looks great. So this is what I called out earlier. I'm like, dude, you missed a spot, right? <laughs> so he's gonna get that, we'll, he'll touch that up. One question that he asked me was, should I get the roof marker lights? And you usually don't see those unless you're at a three quarter ton, right? But right. Uh, man, I think those would look cool. And I actually wanna put those on my square body. So I'll let him put them on yeah. and then he'll know how to do it and then he can come do mine. <laughs> so John, why don't you tell the viewers that these come apart after I've wrestled with these things for years. So these drip rails, um, I did not know this. I did mine the same way, quarter turn with an open-ended wrench. It takes forever. It takes forever to get these off, but this top piece actually snaps off. I don't think it's easy to do, but I can kind of feel the ridge right there and it just kind of pops on into place. And once this is out of the way, you can get a socket on these little screws and they come right out. Now, I can't take credit for knowing that. I actually learned that from a uh, watching an LMC mm. video uh, with, with Kev, what's his name, Kevin Tetz? Kevin Tetz, I think. Yeah. Kevin Tetz, that yeah. And uh, he put some of these on, and that's when he's like, oh, yeah, you just pop this <laughs> off. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so, yeah, if anybody struggled with these, these do come apart. It makes it a lot easier. So inside Matt's interior kind of looks like mine. His is honestly in much better shape than mine. My dash pad was totally trashed. Uh, my steering wheel's all gummy on the back of it, missing the horn button there. Um, my gauges are probably about similar. And your seat's actually in good shape, not bad. So missing a door panel. Yeah, your door panels are kind of tough. But uh, what's the plan for the interior? Uh, just the black plastic uh, door panels, I guess, same like you said from LMC to, to source those. Uh, this was a Scottsdale, so I guess Scottsdale was in the middle between Custom Deluxe and Silverado. I know John Yours is Silverado. It's got the carpet pad and all down here. Um, this is a work truck, you know, military theme build, build so we're going to keep it. Uh, You're not putting a little fu simplistic. fuzzy carpet on the door <laughs> panels? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't either. <laughs> Yeah, well, what a it's come a long way. It's getting there. I mean, it's it's really really looks cool. So people are going to ask, and I know you paid a thousand dollars for it, mm -hmm. and you got it, you drove it, you got it running, and drove it about halfway home, right? And had to get it towed. But uh, what do you have in it total, if you don't mind, if you don't mind saying? Right now, uh, with big block parts scattered out throughout the uh, garage, uh, about five thousand six hundred. And right 5,600 and that's still unlike any build that I do <laughs> Matt's very uh, much more industrial or what's the right word 
industrious i don't know frugal cheap <laughs> no no he's not cheap but uh he'll spend money where he needs to but he's much better at sourcing parts and uh trying to figure out ways around around things um around i lucked out too because the 14 bolt i got is a 410 and i didn't know what gears were in it uh but somewhere along the way i'm guessing somebody swapped them out i don't think a lot of these trucks half tons had 410s but somewhere along the way somebody put 410s in it so Sweet. I was thinking I was going to have to change the front ring and pinion out, but uh, somebody already did that for me, so cool. saved a little money there. Saved a little money and a lot of time. All right, so under the hood here, we've got a uh, 350, and it actually runs pretty good. Um, this problem that he has is the clutch, and the clutch is just uh, not working right. And he's got a big block that he just had machined as far as the block, and he's going to he's building that a little at a time, and he'll get that swapped out, and when he... Imagine when you swap out the uh, the engine, you're going to deal with the clutch, or are you going to deal with the clutch now? I think I'm getting pretty darn close to having the big block ready to go, so uh, I've waited this long. I think I'll just wait and do it all at once. Yeah, okay. That 205 cast iron transfer case and SM465 is about, I think, 400 pounds, the two of them, so I only want to lift it once. <laughs> I only want to lift it <laughs> once, yeah. I don't blame you there. And that's your uh, CUCV bumper. Somebody welded in some uh, expanded metal. It actually doesn't look bad. You gonna leave that in or are you gonna cut I don't it know. out? I was gonna leave it simply because somebody welded the crap out of it. Somebody like me welded it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's an easy buzz, right? Yeah. I mean, a little bit of cleanup. I know it's not, nothing's easy, but yeah. you know. I mean, every single one of them they hit. Yeah. But that looks really cool. And that will mount right to that front bumper? Yeah. Right in the four bolts. Yep, here, here, I see it. And there. Yep. 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 Sweet. So let us know what you guys think. Uh, I really think it's a cool truck. And if you haven't watched, there's only three or four videos on it on a playlist. I'll put it up here in just a minute. And uh, check those out and you can kind of see where it came from to where it is today. So thanks for watching. Really appreciate it.